Hello to all of you fabulous fifth graders. I hope you are doing well today. This is Miss Madden, and I hope that you've enjoyed the slide presentation on Banksy and Keith Haring, who are both um, just well-known street artists. And even though we do not know the true identity of Banksy, we can compare these two artists and we can think about um, the type of art that they create and how fun and um, just amazing and colorful and bright and simple it can be to create this type of graffiti art. So this project is going to be a very quick and simple, how do I draw figures that look like Keith Haring um, inspired figures of people? And one of the things that I love about um, Keith Haring is just about anyone can create the type of images that he draws. So if you look at this, obviously we know that these are people. And we can tell a lot of things about these people just by looking at these extremely simple lines. There's no facial features, there's no detail, but there is tons and tons of movement. Um, I just think this is one of the most fun pictures I've ever seen that Keith Haring has done. Um, I love just how simple that the ground is. I love all the different dance moves that the people are making. And I love how he shows movement through these very bold but very simple lines. And so today we're going to learn how to create a Keith Haring um, figure or two. And then you can take what you are practicing and you can create your own Keith Haring inspired artwork. Maybe you want to show someone dancing, doing ballet. Maybe you'd like to show um, several people playing a sport that you like, like football or basketball. You can absolutely do that with these and it's so simple to do. So let's get started. You're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil, and if you have a Sharpie handy, that would probably be good for doing your bold lines and textures. So if you'd like, you could start with pencil. I'm just going to go ahead and start with Sharpie and just jump right in. So sometimes it's just fun to just jump right in and just deal with it as we go. Okay, so how do I start a Keith Haring inspired figure? This is where you may want the pencil if you do not feel very comfortable jumping into creating it. So let me go ahead and show you with the pencil first. So mine is going to be a lot darker than yours. You want to be able to draw so lightly that you can eventually erase these pencil lines and work around them. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to draw a stick figure. How many of you have ever heard your teacher say, draw a stick figure? But that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start with a stick figure. So here we go. I am going to maybe start right here. And I'm just going to draw a basic circle to represent a person. And then I want to draw the neck. Short neck. I'm going to have shoulders on this side and shoulders on this side. And then I want to add my arm. I can add my, fore, my upper arm and then I can add my forearm. And then I'm just going to draw a little tiny arm or line for my hand. I'm going to do the same thing over here, but I think I want this arm going down. So here's my fore, upper arm. Here's my forearm, and I want these lines to be about the same. And then there's my hand. So as you can see, these are very, very simple to do. So now I want to draw the torso or the upper body. I think I'm going to have this person, this upper body kind of going like this. Maybe a little bit longer. And then I want to draw the leg. This is the lower part of the leg and the foot. Now I'm going 
to draw this part of the leg, lower part of the leg, and the foot. Again, that is a basic stick figure. Now, how do I turn this into one of these amazing key pairing figures? Let me show you the secret. All you need to do is basically go around these lines that you've created. So if this is my head, I'm going to start out here and I'm going to go around and come in a little bit. And then I'm going to come up here and draw my arm. Kind of come out, curve a little bit for my hand, back down and follow that in. Start over here. I'm going to follow this side. And come in just a little bit. Now, depending on what I want this person to look like, I'm just going to kind of come straight down and follow the lines. just like that. Then all we have to do at that point is go back in and erase our pencil lines. So it kind of looks like um, a crime scene a little bit when we first start out. But we don't create art crime scenes. So here we go. Alright, so I'm not quite sure what this fellow is doing. Maybe he's tripping and falling, but that's okay. Alright, so right now, this just looks like a flat person on a flat surface. But if I want it to look like he's moving, then I'm going to go back to my Sharpie and I'm going to put in these lines that kind of show movement. Maybe he's moving his head a little bit. Mm. Maybe about like that. Okay. So just two to three lines in different areas around different spots can make this figure look like he's moving. Now, maybe he's playing soccer. And maybe he is about to kick the ball. So I could even add in a very simple ball and I could add in some lines that make it look like he just kicked that ball. And it's going to go flying through the air. So I now have a soccer player. So if you don't want to have to do this inside stick figure, then you can just simply think about the areas um, of the figure that you're wanting to draw and go from there. So I think I will, I tell you what, Keith Herring creates a figure that's like a baby crawling. So here's the head of the baby. Here is one arm. Here is and then I come down over here with the other arm and the other knee. So maybe this is a baby that's crawling. So okay. So there's lots of different types of figures you can make. I uh, think about a ballerina. I think about a ballerina with their arms up over their head.
And maybe it's someone dancing. Maybe she's spinning. So those lines make it look like she's turning. Okay. Now, obviously, made some very skinny legs right there, but you get the picture. So these are Keith Haring figures from the wonderful um, Keith Haring, who is an artist in New York. I hope you've enjoyed both the videos about the street artist, and I hope that you will give it a shot, creating a few different characters and create your own graffiti or street art from your figures. You can always go back in and add bright colors to your figures. Maybe I want that to look like a ballerina. I don't know why I think about pink when I think about ballerinas, but maybe you can go back in and just fill in all of your different figures with different colors. As you saw in some of the examples that he did, is also known for kind of creating these really simple um, patterned backgrounds. And so one thing that Keith Haring would do is he would just start creating these lines. And he might just continue to go in and create more and more lines. Now I don't always know what those lines were representative of. Maybe they were just supposed to represent backgrounds, but he would add all these beautiful and unique um, backgrounds around his figures that would take up some of the white space in the area. It always just kind of made it fun and bright, like there were maybe elements around the figure in the background, and the person was just interacting with that background. So you maybe can even go in and I think a lot of times he would leave the background almost black and white and add all of the color in the figures to really make it contrast and to make it really pop out. But you could definitely add color to um, those backgrounds as well. One thing that I think about with um, the soccer player is adding um, the ground beneath and maybe adding what looks like patterns that we would all recognize it as grass, right? And then he would just color in the whole bottom a solid color. No value, no darks and lights, just almost like a complete um, cartoon effect. Because most of the time, Keith Haring was using chalk in his artwork in the subway and he needed to get it done quickly because, unfortunately, it was against the law um, to draw in the subway areas. And he was drawing on black paper in empty um, ad places. So um, he was trying not to deface the subway trains or anything like that. And sometimes he would get arrested. So um, we do have to be very careful when we do art that we are doing it in a way that protects the environment and protects things around us. And we never want to create art on a building or anything that doesn't belong to us. We always want to check with someone before we do that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson and I look forward to seeing you next week.